First off, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel, All That Jazz. All right, so look, right here in front of me, as you guys can see, I have the brand new Perfect Grade Unleashed. I am super stoked to jump into this box right here. Now, before we do that though, I gotta give a huge shout out to my sponsor, Mecca Warehouse. Nick, appreciate you for sending this over. I'm about to tear into this and uh, yeah, I can't wait to get started. Now, look, I asked you guys, you guys know I don't do Gundam reviews anymore, really, because, yeah, I just don't. But this is a special one we got right here. So I asked you guys if you guys wanted to see a review of this, and you guys said yes. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to unbox this thing, take a look at what's inside, go over it, and then I'm going to snap it together on live stream on Twitch. So if you're watching the replay of this, you know, the whole live stream and me building it has already happened but hey hopefully you guys uh make it to that part as well but yeah so i'm gonna unbox it we're gonna check it out and then i'm gonna snap it on live probably over the course of a couple of days after it's snapped up i'm going to come back i'll review it take a look at some of the features and all that good stuff and then lastly i'm gonna paint this guy and i'm gonna paint this in. i've already decided i'm gonna paint this in new gundam colors and uh, i think it's gonna look badass but all that said let's go i want to jump into this it's time to get started so let me get a knife or something do we need a knife or anything well i you know what actually okay maybe maybe i'm moving a little too fast i'm a little excited all right, I'm a little hype. Let's take a look at the box first before, you know, before shit gets out of hand. Let's let's do that. All right, so very first thing that we have on the box. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys, if you guys have already built the first perfect grade Gramps, this box feels a little bit bigger for some reason. Um, I don't have that box anymore, so I can't really tell exactly, but it feels a little bit bigger. I do have, I got perfect grade wing zero back there. And it definitely looks a little bit bigger than that box. But we've got this nice box here with uh, Gramps kind of sprawled across the front half of this box. And you can see where they've really kind of broken down all the little nitty gritty pieces of him on here. And uh, yeah, he almost looks like, almost like a Lego set or something. But you can see like they've really broken out all the pieces. There's so many more opening hatches on this uh, compared to the first Gramps. Now, for the back, it does get a little bit more interesting on the back. There is some other cool stuff going on back here. So, first off, I noticed that we've got that 40th anniversary uh, logo there at the top, the Evolution Link System. Very, very cool. So this, the kit adopts a step-by-step -step assembly process despite being a PG kit. The internal frame, mechanical parts, truss frame, external armor, and effects incorporate condensed forms of the latest technology, allowing you to experience the evolution of Gumpla while assembling the mobile suit. The Gumpla Evolution Link System offers a simulation of the assembly of an actual mobile suit. So that's actually super dope. So. This build should feel um, the way it would feel if we were uh, a part of the construction of an actual uh, mobile suit, essentially. So that's pretty dope. That's a, that's definitely a uh, reimagination of building Gumpla. I like the fact that they really put some thought behind that. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, over here on the left hand side, we can see the five different stages that Gramps is going to go through uh, being built into what will ultimately be this 
badass kit that we have right here. So you can see starting off from phase one, it's like just the bare minimum of the frame uh, surrounding the uh, core fighter. Phase two looks like it fills out a little bit more and it also starts to add some of what would look like the actual mechanics. Uh, so like your, your pistons, your hydraulics, you know, all that type of thing. The third stage before we get into armor looks like it's more so like detail parts. Um, I see where there's like photo etching type stuff that looks like it goes over the, uh, over the frame. And then we've got phase four, which Honestly, phase four looks to be the completed uh, portion of the, the kit. Like once you get phase four, it looks like it's done, but then they go on to show you phase five, which is just showing you all of those hatches open. Um, so very cool. Now, the one thing about this kit, I was originally going to get some LEDs for this kit and you know upgrade the LEDs in here. However, this kit looks like it already comes with all the LEDs I could ever think to put in here. Um, it looks like it has some RGB LEDs already in here because when we look at this section down here in the bottom left, not only can the eyes and the vents change colors between blue, yellow, orange, and green, but it looks like it already has red thrusters. And, and I think it looks like the beam saver is lit in this thing. Like this kit is literally lit. It's lit y'all. So I don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna have to do any LEDs in here. So that's nice, I guess. So that, that's cool, that's cool. So now off to the right here, we have a giant picture. I mean, it fills up like the whole right side of this box, but it's really, really beautiful looking photo if I do say so myself. This is, you know, we've got Gramps in what looks like that stage four, and then also in the stage three, it looks like behind him. And then of course, you got Gramps in his, probably one of his most famous poses, um, except he has his head on still. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's got him in his famous pose there. And looking at this picture, it does look like that beam saber is lit, so. All right, so that's it for the box, guys. Let's crack this bad boy open and see what's going on inside. I just realized like my elbows ashy. I didn't sit up pretty much at all for this video. This is this is a rough take. I'm just excited to build it. So, you know, you, you get what you get with this video. Because I really didn't set up like I, like I properly would. Let me see here, Where do I, how do I open this damn thing? Oh, here we go. Ooh. That is a bad boy right there. All right, cats, y'all wanna play with the box? You wanna play with the, the PGU box? There you go, y'all Y'all have a blast with that, okay? So the very first thing we have in here is our decals. It looks like on top we've got the photo etching. We've also got foil stickers. We've got what look like an upgraded version of foil stickers, as well as a pretty large uh, regular sticker sheet as well. Now this doesn't come with water slides, which absolutely blows. Like this is a $300 kit, 40th anniversary, you know, it's the first PGU. This should have water slides. You know, I'm not gonna let Ben off the hook on that one. This should definitely have water slides, but that's okay. Hopefully uh, a couple of the companies out there that make water slides will have something out for this, at least by the time that I get finished with the paint job on here. So, so the first runner up here is, looks like this is like our hands. We got different hand options as well as some extra like chrome options here. And um, I, this all does look like it's probably plated. So for me, this will probably all get stripped here and I will end up repainting this, but we've got the hands there. Next up, we've got G1, which is a multicolor uh, runner here. We've got a couple of clear parts, a lot of yellow here, some reds, and it looks like some pieces for the head as well. This is like, you know, like a dark gray. I'll say this yellow is kind of, I don't want to say it's a dingy yellow, but it's not a, it's not a very bright yellow. It's more of a very like kind of toned down type of yellow, but it still looks good. Um, but it's not, it's not loud. Yeah, I think loud is the word I'm looking for. It's not loud. So then we've got the B1 runner that's also in there. And this looks like we've got some pieces for the backpack, the waist, and a little bit for the core fighter as well. So 
Very, very cool. Ooh, one thing I do notice about this is if you look really closely in the corners, it looks like we actually have marks in here indicating uh, what this actually, what these parts actually go to. The only other place that I've seen Bandai do that is on the Megas. Um, so that's kind of cool. All right, next up we've got the A1 runner, and this looks like some more um, plated parts, which is unfortunate because I'm gonna have to strip these too. But like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna try like a little piece of the runner before I end up trying to trying to strip these. But on here it looks like we have some joint pieces. These are definitely look like a bunch of like uh, detail parts here. So you can see we've got like some parts that obviously go like around the joints and the knees probably, or maybe even in the arms and uh, probably just like pistons and stuff in here as well. So the next bag that we pull out actually has some of our metal parts and it's not as many metal parts as I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more, but we have a absolutely awesome looking beam saver here. And it looks like this is indeed lit, which is, that is crazy awesome. I can't wait to try that. It looks like we get a battery for that, for the little beam saver. And uh, looks like we also have the LED, which I assume is gonna go in the head. So the next runner up is the S1, 2, 3, and 4 runner. And this runner is also a metallic type of runner, except for instead of it being like a chrome, this time it's more of like a polished aluminum type deal going on. Next up, we've got the Z runner, which the Z runner is what has our two giant beam savers on here. These beam savers are just as big or just as tall as like a 1144 scale uh, kit. It's probably actually larger than a 1144 scale kit, but very, very nice, two big beam savers. Then we've got the K runner, looks like K one through five. And this runner seems to have a lot of head pieces, um, some beam saver pieces. I guess we get the option to have some extra beam savers. So maybe we have the option to just have like a regular beam saver without any lights. And then we also have the lighted version. So I think we actually get three, which is pretty cool. We've got some waist pieces here as well in the K2 area. And then in the K4 area, it looks like we're starting to get into the shield, which this two pieces, these two long pieces here for the shield look amazing. I'm really, really digging the panel lining that's in there. That stuff looks sharp as hell. So also in the K5 runner, we get Sela and Armoro uh, standing figures, but then we also get Armoro in both the cockpit and in the uh, core fighter cockpit. So I guess we get them two ways, three ways really. Now we've got what's labeled another A1 and A2 runner. This is a very, very dark gray. And this looks like to be mostly all torso pieces. Next up, we get two eye runners and the eye runners seem to be some of our arm pieces. And again, just like kind of how we saw on that shield, the uh, the detail, like the panel lining that's on this thing is crazy. Like I'm in love with this panel lining. This is great because I haven't you know gotten into making my own panel lining yet. So I'm really impressed by uh, the level of detail that's on here. Like this is gonna look super sharp. Next up is the O runner, um, O one through three. And looks like on this runner, we get more torso pieces as well as some of the feet pieces. I will say about this right here, this is a very kind of deep red. After that, we've got the R runner and the R runner is mostly hands. Now, the one thing I'm like, I already don't like about these hands is that they're all static. I, I guess I was kind of thinking that this kit would have more, um, you know, articulate fingers, but looking at this runner, it looks like we're gonna have to choose, you know, uh, what hands that we want right off the bat and just kind of stick with that. If we wanna change them out, we have to actually change out the hands. So next we have the X1 runner, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, just looking at this thing, I have no idea what this is. My best guess is that this is possibly the handle for the shield. Very cool, it looks like this may even be magnetized. Next up, we've got the X2 runner, and the X2 actually feels like polycaps. Very, very soft polycaps, which definitely surprised to see these in here, but there's not many of them. Um, so yeah, there's a couple in here. Looks like for the shield, the head, and the waist. Next runner is our H runner, and our H runner is molded in a blue and a yellow. Again, this yellow is kind of dark, kind of dingy. 
I guess. Um, but it still looks good. Now for this H runner, there looks like there's actually a two-tone blue here. You have this lighter blue on the edges, and then as you move inward, this blue in the center definitely looks a tad bit darker, more on par with that yellow and that red that we saw on uh, one of the earlier runners. All right, next up is the P2 runner, and our P2 runner has all of our clear pieces on it, it looks like. So we've got clear pieces for the hatch of the core fighter, clear pieces for the chest, and it looks like uh, some clear pieces for the eyes, as well as some various other clear pieces that just looking at them right now, I can't really tell what they go to. Next runner is the T runner, T1 through five. And again, this is kind of a, a metal type of runner. You can tell they went for the metal type feel with this. However, it's not, it doesn't look to be plated or anything. I mean, it's, it's definitely not plated. But um, this is more of a kind of what I would describe as a steel color. Next one up is the P3 runner. And this P3 runner is for our shield, it looks like. And we also get some pistons for the legs. But the thing that I noticed about this is this is a different shade of red than the red that we saw earlier um, for the feet. So this is, um, this is probably closer to the red that I would expect, but um, you know, it's nice that they're giving us these different shades that, that just adds to the detail. So next up is the C runner or at least C one through C three. And it looks like for this one, we're getting some more of those really, really dark gray pieces for the legs. Next up is the L runner. And this looks like this is L one through L three. And this one definitely has some pieces for what looks to be the arms, maybe some for the feet as well in here. And almost, I want to, I want to say there's some pieces here for the head as well. Now, the thing that kind of stands out to me on this one is that this is the first white runner that looks slightly off white. It doesn't look to be the same white as some of the other white runners that we've already run into. Next up, we have two D runners and both of these D runners look to be our left and right legs. So very, very nice. These are molded in that super dark color as well, the super dark gray. And uh, yeah, there's both of our legs there. Next up is the MSF1 and MSF2. And these are some of those like pre-made um, inner frame pieces where you just kind of cut them out clean them up and they're already ready to go. You see these and I think in some of the high res and as well as I think some of the real grades as, as well, I wanna say. Moving right along, we've got the F2 runner. This is also in a gray, but this is actually in a lighter gray from that darker gray that we've been seeing so far. And uh, here it looks like we actually got some arm pieces going on, but I do see what looks to be a, um, a leg piece here as well. Next up is the N1 through N5 runner. And and this is some more of that uh, that red, but this one looks closer to that of what we saw in the shield. So a little bit lighter than the dark red we saw at, like for the bottom. So it looks like we'll have like a light red on top of the foot and a dark red kind of at the bottom on the sole. And uh, yeah, this actually looks really good. You've got some of the core fighter pieces here, some of the waist pieces here. And uh, yeah, this thing looks, this looks really damn sharp. Following that, we've got the C2 and C3 runner. The C2 runner seems to be some of our arm pieces. And over here on the C3 side, we've got some more of our leg parts. Next up is the V2 runner. Man, we've, we're all the way down to the Vs. So yeah, this is the V2 runner where we've obviously got uh, part of his uh, his blaster here. I don't even, is blaster the right word to use for Gramps' gun? I'm not even sure. But yeah, we've got Gramps' gun right here. And it uh, looks like we're gonna be getting a couple more pieces because there's definitely the top half of this is missing. So definitely, hopefully gonna be somewhere else in here, probably in a different color. Next up is the U1 runner. And yep, we definitely have some more pieces to Gramps' gun here, as well as it looks like the top of the hands. Next up is the E1 and 2 runner, and this is also in some lighter gray. And here we're looking like we're getting pieces for both the torso on the E1 side and some of the, uh, some of the waist pieces over here on the E2 side. Next up is the J1 and 2 runners, and the J1 and 2 runners look to mostly be uh, leg pieces for both sides. Now this is also in the white, and this looks like the brighter white. 
So, so far it looks like we have two different shades of white in here. So next up we have the L2 and L4 runner, and this is also in white, but it's molded in that kind of darker white. Then we've got the T2 through T5 runner. So in the T2 section, we've got parts for our torso. In the T3, we've got parts for our waist. T4, we've got parts for the legs. And T5, we've got parts for the arm. Next, we get our M1 through four runner. And the M1 is pretty much just the head pieces. We've got his V fin there, as well as uh, some of the armor pieces, including the top of his head. And the M3 right below it, it looks like we've got some pieces for uh, the torso there. M2 at the bottom, looks like we're getting pieces for his waist and definitely some of the, the sections um, on, the, uh, on the skirt there. And then last but not least on here, we get the M4 section, which has some pieces for our shield. And these are some pretty big pieces up here. So the very last runner that we get is our Q1 and 2 runner. And on our Q1 side, we've got pieces for our shield. It's a huge piece here for our shield. And at the bottom here, we've got some pieces for our torso. So, oh, and at the very, very bottom, you can actually see there's some pieces for the core fighter as well. So that does it for all the runners in this kit, guys. There's, this is, this is a mountain of runners. I'm actually a little intimidated now. It's been a while since I built a PG. And I'm not gonna lie, PGs are a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of pieces. It's a lot of stuff to paint, but this kit is just, too awesome looking for me to uh, to pass it up. So yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready, I think. So last but not least inside the box, we get our manual. And let me tell you guys, this, this is a pretty hefty manual. Like this thing, you could definitely go up the side of somebody's head with this book right here. Like this thing is pretty thick, but uh, very nice picture of Gramps there on the front. And we got that same picture from the box here on the back. So flipping through very first page, you've got a nice, nice display of Gramps and all his glory on here with some of those hatches opened up, as well as it looks like we get like a little story behind the Unleashed. So that's cool. I'm not gonna read all that right now, but I will leave that up on screen if you guys wanna check that out. Next page in there, we get more of the breakdown of that phase system, the one, two, three, and four. And uh, let's see, what, what do they actually call that? So phase one is assembly, phase two is articulation, phase three is structure, phase four is external armor, and phase five is effects. Next up, it's showing us some of the, the light up effects, some of the LEDs that actually come with this kit. So we've got the twin eyes, talking about obviously the eyes and gramps, but we've got the heat dissipation fins, which that part I think is really cool. That's where we're getting the RGB color down in his chest. Well, technically he's got RGB throughout his whole body, it looks like, except for his thrusters. But yeah, we're getting RGB in his eyes and in his chest, which is really quite cool. It looks like uh, whatever color you make the eyes, uh, the chest is gonna follow that. So you can go blue, yellow, orange, and green, it looks like. Then we also get that lit up beam saver, which is absolutely awesome. I, I really, really like this. I hope that Bandai uh, starts to include features like this in smaller kits, I don't know. I, I think that I think that part's just dope. So next up we get the core block, which I'm hoping the core block uh, is gonna be completely separate from the from the core fighter. Hopefully we'll get both of those. I think that we actually might since we saw um, a figure for both the cockpit and the core fighter, but only time will tell once we get this thing snapped together. So then here at the bottom is showing us the beam rifle, the beam sabers, the shield, and the Vulcans with a little bit of information about all of those. But it doesn't look like there's anything crazy special about those as far as like gimmicks. So on the next page, it actually starts to take us into all of the runners that we just looked over. And the one cool thing that I'm saying in here is it's actually showing you where to break these runners apart from each other. Um, I guess that might make it easier. I suppose, but uh, yeah, it's showing you where you can actually split these runners down the uh, down the center, or where you would want to separate them at, at least. On the last page here, of course, we're gonna get our stickers and our decals and all those good things. But the thing that I'm really gonna have to uh, take a look at and be a little bit more careful with is some of this new stuff that we have in here, like uh, that beam saber. We've got that photo etching that's on here. 
We've got uh, apparently these other stickers. These are metallic 3D stickers is what they're calling this. Um, those are the ones that are, look like upgraded foil stickers to me. Just, you know, that's what they look like to me. Upgraded foil stickers, but they're calling it metallic 3D stickers. But at the bottom here, it's also showing us how to apply these. So this is definitely something that I'm gonna have to be uh, really careful about looking at when I'm going through doing this build. On the next page is actually showing us what runners are used for what phases, or it says mainly used at least. So this, I actually love this. This is, this is amazing because if you've built that first PG or any of the PGs, you guys know there's a lot of runners and uh, being able to like, just figure out what runners you need to kind of mainly look at for whatever section you're doing is a huge help. So, you know, that's that's awesome. I'm definitely gonna utilize this and pull out just the runners that I need for this section that I'm working on and uh, run with it from there. So shout out to Bandai for that. That's, that's awesome. And then we come to the first page, it looks like. Yeah, this is the first page of working on this kit. So from here, it looks like it's time to get to work. Let me see here, anything else cool in this book that we need to review? I don't think so, let's see here. So in the back here, we do get a nice two page color uh, section back here where it shows Gramps with all those hatches open. And I can't lie, he looks, he looks gorgeous. Like this thing looks epic so on the next page we're getting a shot of gramps in his phase three stage with that that beautiful looking skeleton that they've got for him with the photo etching and all those metal pieces and all that good looking stuff i mean that thing looks sharp following that we've got a couple of shots of gramps moving around here uh just showing us some of the torso articulation it looks like it looks like there is in fact a magnet for the shield which is really cool that's a nice feature and uh, then it just shows us some more of the open hatches here at the bottom. Last but not least, we get our marking guide and our color guide. So there's actually a lot of colors used in this kit, which most of this is not gonna really matter for me because I'm gonna switch his colors up. Although I may stick to some of these whites because New Gundam definitely has some white in there and he's got some yellow, a little bit of red. So uh, yeah, there'll definitely be you know some of these cues that I'll hold on to, but for the most part, I'm not gonna use this uh, this color palette. So, but if you are building this kit and you want to paint them the you know standard Gramps colors, that's awesome to have that there. It looks like they even have it with the English translations on there, so that's always good. It's it even tells you like what body part and what color and it breaks down the percentage if you're gonna mix up the paints yourself. So then last but not least here, it shows us all of the markings and where all of those stickers and decals go. But this is also something that I'm not gonna use because I'm gonna end up getting some aftermarket decals for this kit. And that is it for Gramps' booklet, guys, for this PG Unleashed. All right, so we got all of that done. There's a mound of parts here. It is time to get to work. I will catch you guys on Twitch. So then the next time I get back into this video will be after Gramps is built, which will probably be a couple days from now. So uh, we'll come back after Gramps is built and review the final product, finished product. All right, so yeah, let's get to work. All right, so what is going on, guys? It is a couple days later now. Uh, hopefully you guys were able to catch some of my Twitch live streams that I did as I built Gramps. But yeah, it's a couple days later, Gramps is built and I'm ready to let you guys know how I feel uh, either good or bad about this kit right here. So I'm not gonna hold you guys in suspense for too long. I'm gonna let you know how I feel about the kit overall and then I'll go into some of the details. So should you get this kit? Is this a kit that you should be trying to hunt down and drop 250 some odd dollars on? Yes, 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 and yes. Lord Jesus, yes. Guys, guys, this kit is amazing. It is amazing. I don't care if you pause the video right now to go find you and source you one of these and come back to the video, okay? If you don't take nothing else from this video, please go buy one of these kits, all right? 
honest to God, I think this may be my favorite kit that I have ever built from Bandai. So if you guys haven't gotten your hands on one of these yet, by all means, pause the video, go take five, do what you gotta do, go get one, and I will be sitting right here waiting for your return, and we can talk some more about this PG Unleashed Gramps. Now that that's out the way, hopefully you're back, you got your kit, maybe it's in the mail, it's on the way. Let's talk about this guy. So first off, let's talk about the build of this kit. To me, this kit really feels like a mega on steroids. That's just the, the feel that I got from it. And that's a good thing because, you know, it's a very easy kit to put together, much easier than you would think a perfect grade would be, especially if you've built any other perfect grades before. Now, I know some of y'all are probably scratching your head and thinking, well, how can that be? Well, let me go a little bit further and explain that, right? So specifically to you all that have built multiple grades, SDs, HGs, uh, MGs, Megas, perfect grades, the whole nine, right? If you're a person that's built multiple grades, then you'll definitely understand me when I say that there's definitely a difficulty like level between the grades, right? For example, a high grade feels more complicated than an SD, a master grade feels more complicated than a high grade, and a perfect grade feels more complicated than a master grade in general. But in the case of this perfect grade, it definitely does not feel on par difficulty wise with another perfect grade. This feels like, it really feels like a master grade version of a mega. Because of that, if you're somebody that hasn't built a perfect grade yet because you're kind of worried of that uh, level gap or that difficulty jump, this is definitely probably the kit for you to start on. I've built the other perfect grade gramps as well. And I'll say that this perfect grade gramps was way easier than the old perfect grade gramps. So that right there is a huge, huge, huge plus for me. I love the fact that this kit is so easy to put together. There are a couple of things that this kit does during the building process that you can clearly see look like they came from the Mega, including you know showing you what pieces go to what sections of the kit on the runner. But also one thing that I love about this kit was that they took the time in the booklet to show you when a particular runner would actually be completely emptied out so that you would be able to just kind of put that to the side. And that's super helpful considering that this kit has a ton, and I mean a ton of runners. Also, I gotta mention the fact that at the beginning of every section when you're building this kit out, the book actually tells you what runners are gonna be used for that section. That's also another really, really useful thing for you so that you can pull out the runners that you know you're gonna need for that section, which definitely contributes to the ease of the build on this kit. All right, that's, for the, that's it for the build. The build's super easy. Uh, yeah, don't be afraid to build this one for sure. Let's go into detail. So now, yes, obviously I'm going to be painting my perfect grade, but I wanna take a look at the overall aesthetics of this kit from the eyes of somebody that may not paint their kit. And for me guys, hands down, this is the best looking kit I have ever seen from Bandai. Just hands down, just, just, just without doing anything to it. Like this kit has so much surface detail. It's, I'm trying not to curse. It's ridiculous. It, it, it is just absolutely insane how much detail they put into the outside. And even the inner frame of this kit is just so many panel line options, so many little nooks and crevices and just, it's, it's, it's crazy. Also, gotta point out the fact that Bandai went a long way doing a lot of color separation and uh, color, I guess, modulation, you would say here. So you've got, you know, different shades of blue, different shades of red, different shades of yellow, different shades of white. All of these things really help to break the kit up and really makes it look that more detailed. So you've got all these different colors going on as well as all of these different panels 
panel lines and small uh, lined accents all throughout the kit. And then to top it off, then you've got, I think it was five different metal colors inside of here, including chrome, gold, and a couple other different metals and metallics that they have in here. It just all really, really serves to make this kit really, really pop. So even if you're a person that's not gonna necessarily paint your kit and you just wanna build it straight out of the box, this kit is gonna look incredible on your shelf just the way it is with the included stickers that come with it with a little bit of panel lining and maybe some flat coat and you're gonna have an absolutely gorgeous kit on your shelf. As far as motion goes, Gramps is super flexible, very, very fluid joints. I mean, he can he can really do some crazy poses if you really uh, put your, your imagination to it and you can get him to balance. But uh, yeah, I don't think you'll have any problem coming up with a dope pose for Gramps on your shelf. One of the most awesome things about this kit was the inclusion of some LEDs. Now you got LEDs in the last Gramps too, but the way that they did LEDs in this Gramps is a little bit different. So the first set of LEDs is actually for Gramps' eyes and his chest. You get one LED box that actually goes up underneath his head that allows you to uh, turn on the LEDs in his head and his chest. And they give you four options of LEDs in here, as seen in this photo. Now, the reason why I'm showing you guys in this photo is because Bandai didn't give us any batteries for this. So yeah, that part kind of sucks. Now, the other place that we get LEDs is we get one battery operated beam saver. I didn't realize how much I was gonna like this until I actually turned this on. And there's something about turning this on and seeing this in person, like this part is just like, it's gonna make you laugh, it's gonna make you smile. It's, you're gonna get a kick out of it the first time you see it for sure. And I know that this is like something that some aftermarket companies have been doing for a little while now, but if you haven't been able to like see one of those or anything, when you see this for the first time, you're gonna absolutely fall in love with this. The lighted beam saver is not like the craziest, brightest thing in the world, but it definitely lights up pretty good and it's just amazing to look at. In addition to the lighted beam saver, the lighted beam saver hilt can actually be switched out with one of the non-lighted beam saver hilts on Gramps' back. And you can place this lighted version here in order to give Gramps lighted verniers. Now this part, I wasn't that big of a fan of. It really doesn't provide that much light. And uh, you could probably go ahead and put some LEDs of your own in here. But I'll give Bandai credit. This was this was a nice try. It was a good attempt. I, I mean, I like the, the thought behind it. But for me, mine just didn't seem to light up that bright. Now, for me, this kit is definitely a solid, like, 9 out of 10. Like, there's just so much that I do love about it. And I think it's just such an awesome, amazing-looking kit. And I think it would be great on anybody's um, shelf, even if, like, you know, you've never done a perfect grade or anything close. Uh, it's not perfect. There is definitely a couple of things that, you know, could definitely be improved. For one, I'm not a fan of the vents on this kit, on the chest vents. The chest vents aren't really sturdy and they don't connect to each other the same way that they did in the first PG Gramps. So they can almost kind of move independently and that doesn't really look good in my opinion. I'll probably end up having to glue these into place when I go through and uh, paint this kit. Second off is the ball joint connection on the right wrist. For me, this was just a little bit loose, especially when trying to hold up his beam rifle, which is pretty big. I um, mean, he just can't, you know, his wrist just can't support the weight. So for this spot, I probably have to add a little bit of uh, clear nail polish or something just to kind of thicken that joint up. The next thing I'm not really a big fan of on this kit is the beam rifle itself. When you look at Gramps, the colors that they chose to do on him and the places that they chose those colors fit, you know, immaculate. Like it, it looks it looks crazy good. But on the gun, I feel like the gun, they just kind of like dropped the ball on the color selection. I'm just not a fan of the stock colors that they have on this gun. And the last kind of like disappointment for me was the fact that we didn't get movable hands. I know some people don't like movable hands, but in a kit this big and this expensive and this grand, I would have hoped that Bandai would have maybe, uh, you know, introduced some new technology or something to give us some, you know, articulating fingers and whatnot, but instead we just get solid hands. It is nice that they give us um, quite a few solid hands so that we have 
plenty of options, but personally, I would have loved to have seen some articulating hands in here, you know, so we could do all different types of poses with the hands and whatnot. In this particular area, the hands, this is one of the spots that really feels dumbed down to like mega status uh, type, of, type of feel to it. As far as accessories, there's nothing grand here to talk about. All of the accessories that come with the kit are there that you could ever really uh, ask for, but there's nothing grand about them. They're just kind of uh, there, in my opinion. The, the main show is definitely on Gramps himself, but you do get a nice looking shield. You get your beam saber, you get your beam rifle, and you get your core fighter. Overall, guys, I am extremely happy with this kit. I cannot wait to get this thing painted up. If you guys haven't gotten your hands on one yet, please go out there and source you one, get you one. Go check out Mecha Warehouse and see if maybe Nick has one. Use my code GU10 and get yourself 10% off. And uh, yeah, definitely go out and get this kit. This kit is definitely worth it. Even if you're not gonna paint it, even if you're just gonna slap the regular stickers on there. And oh yeah, by the way guys, as you can tell, I didn't put any of the stickers whatsoever on my kit because you know I am gonna be, uh, you know, painting them. So I try to save myself the hassle of having to, you know, take stickers off. So yeah, there's no stickers on it. As well as you may notice in a couple places where it's not snapped tightly all the way together. Hey, that's just another thing I do to uh, make it easier for me to take this thing apart. I sincerely hope that you guys will get one of these. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are gonna get one of these. And uh, if you guys do get one, you know, maybe post up some photos on Instagram, tag me on Instagram so I can check it out, see what you guys are doing.